Hello, and welcome to Code Pro, your source for helpful and effective programming tutorials. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to implement a basic picker view in an iOS application. What we're going to build is going to look something like this. The basic picker view here that we can scroll through and then see each element that gets updated inside of our application up here. So to get started, open up Xcode, create a new single uh, view iOS application, and let's begin. I'm inside of my empty project here. The first thing that we want to do is go into our main storyboard and add our picker view to our view controller. <clears throat> so go into your main storyboard and select your view controller and then go down into the object library and start typing in picker. And you'll want to grab the picker view and drag this onto your view controller and you can position it anywhere you like but I'm going to put mine in the center and uh, I'm going to resize mine just a little bit. And the next thing we're going to want to do is drag a label onto the view controller so that we can update the text for what we select in the picker. So go down into the object library here and look for a UI label. And drag that onto your view controller. And I'm just going to try and position mine in the center. And go ahead and bring that out here just so it's nice and square. I'm going to center my text that you can adjust the alignment uh, from the attribute inspector over here. And you can just delete the default text in there so it's empty. And I'm just going to put some constraints on it so that it stays where it needs to be. So make sure your label selected and then go down here to your uh, constraints and I'm just going to use reset to suggested constraints to get that kind of how I want it. Now let's add some constraints to the picker view. So select the picker view and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the label. We're going to go down here and reset to suggested constraints and resolve those auto layout issues and now we shouldn't have any warnings complaining about auto layout constraint problems. So next let's pop over into viewcontroller.swift and start implementing uh, our picker view. The very next thing we need to do is create the interface builder outlet connections for our picker view and our label to map to our view controller file. So to do that we want to open the assistant editor by clicking here and we're going to want to look for our main storyboard usually from the recent files you can find it here. So make sure your storyboard is selected on the right hand side. And I'm going to close some of my side windows here and make sure you have your view controller selected and look for your picker view. And if you hold down the control key, click and drag, you can drag over to your view controller and create the IB outlet connection. I'm just going to give mine the name picker view. And we're going to want to go ahead and repeat the same thing for our label. So hold down the control key, click and drag. I'm going to call mine uh, detail label. Now let's go ahead and build our data source for our picker view. So what I'm going to use for mine is a, a collection of strings, just to keep things simple. So I'm going to define that collection like this. We'll call it data source. And I'm going to set mine equal to just some static strings. Use some tech names. Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, Android, and Google. Now the very next thing we need to do is implement our picker view delegate and picker view data source. Uh, so what we're going to do is in view did load we're going to do two things. We're going to assign the picker views delegate and the picker views data source equal to self or equal to the view controller that we're in. Um, so what we're going to do is simply picker view dot data source will be set to self and picker view dot delegate will also be assigned to self and what we're going to do after that is wrap the implementation of those delegate and data source methods in an extension of our view controller to keep uh, those methods organized separately from the rest of our view controller implementation um, to keep it clean so what we're going to do is create an extension on view controller and it's going to implement the UI picker view delegate. 
and UI Picker View Data Source. Now, if you hit the command key and click uh, by highlighting, let's say, the data source, you can actually see the methods from the protocol. And in this case, these are the methods we're going to be implementing from the data source. So we'll start here, and uh, we'll get to the delegate in a second. So as you can see, number of components in the picker view and the number of rows in the component. So let's go ahead and build those out right now. And so what are we doing right here? Um, number of components simply means how many columns are going to be in this picker view, right? Um, in our case, we're just returning one component or the single column selection of strings or co tech company titles that will be available in our picker view. Uh, the number of rows in component is simply how many rows are going to be in a particular column of pickable text. Um, in this case, it's going to be assigned to the count of our data source array here. So it's going to simply return the size of that array as the number of rows um, for, for that particular component. And you're allowed to have more than one component. You can return two or even three components here if you want to. For example, if you think of a date picker, a date picker would have, let's say, a month, uh, a day, and a year um, in picker view format, so it would have more than one component. Um, but to keep things simple, we're just going to do one component for this tutorial. So let's also take a look at the UI picker view delegate. So same idea, uh, hit the command key and click into UI picker view delegate, and let's take a look at what's available in here. Um, so the two methods we're going to implement are the did select row and the title for row. Um, and, and basically this means that for each row, it's going to return the string title, in our case, the name of each uh, company or tech company in our data source. And when we make a selection by moving an item in the picker view, um, this is going to fire, uh, giving us the row that was just moved into position. And there's other methods in here too that you can implement if you need various other functionality that are worth taking a look at just to see what they do. So let's go ahead and implement these two methods right now. So back over in our view controller, I'm going to implement the did select row. And I'm going to also implement the title for row in component, for component. And for this one, it's quite simple. Um, we're going to return the item in our collection uh, for the row uh, index. So it'll look something like this. Return data source at the index for the row. And that will return the string value and display that in the picker view appropriately. And the final thing we need to do is make sure that when we make a selection, we update our detail label with the text of the item that we just selected. And we can simply implement that right here in did select row. So anytime we make a selection, we're going to update the text for our detail label by doing this. Detail label dot text equals data source for the selected row. And it's that simple. So anytime we make a selection in here, we're going to have the row that we made the selection at, and we can simply look for that particular item from our data source and bind that to the detail label text and see the update right away. So let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see what it looks like. I've got my iPhone 10 simulator open, and you can see here's my picker view, and it's loaded appropriately with every element from our data source. And as I start to scroll through items in here, you can see that the label is updating uh, with the item that I am selecting. And that wraps up our tutorial covering the UI picker view. And as you can see, there wasn't a lot of code needed to get this up and running, um, but now you have the basic building blocks to implement a picker view in your own iOS application and understand kind of how to use the UI picker view delegate and UI picker view data source to add the necessary customization that you might need in your app and expand off from there. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And as always, you'll find the completed code available on GitHub 
The link for that is down below in the description. And uh, make sure to check out Code Pro on social media. There's Facebook links and Twitter links down below as well. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all of our tutorials. So thank you so much for stopping by.